Today, you are going to learn about robotics by building a device called a two degree of freedom planar manipulator. Manipulator is just another word for arm. We call robot arms manipulators because they don't always look like arms, but they can be used to manipulate or move around objects. This manipulator is called planar because it will move within a plane or a flat surface. Two degrees of freedom means that this robot will have two motors or servos. A servo is a kind of actuator. We give it an electrical input and it produces a mechanical output. In this case, the mechanical output is motion. A servo is like a motor. It is electrical and it has a shaft that can rotate. But a servo is different than a motor because a motor can be used to easily control the speed of something while a servo can be used to easily control the position of something. Since we mostly care about the position of our manipulator, not its speed, we will build our manipulator using servos. Let's take a look for a moment at the parts that you have at your table. Since robotics is the combination of mechanical, electrical, and computing systems, you would expect to find some parts here that are mechanical, some that are electrical, and some that can be programmed. These parts here are your servos. The top part of the servo is called the horn. When we give the servo power and a signal, the horn will rotate like this. Notice that the servo has three wires coming from it within this one cable. One of the wires is red, one is black, and the third one is white. Electricity flows kind of like a fluid flows. We have to have one pipe or wire to give electricity to the servo and we need another pipe or wire to get the electricity back. The red wire is the one we will use to give the servo electricity and the black wire called ground is the one we will use to get the electricity back. The white wire is the signal wire. This is the wire we will use to tell the servo which position we want the horn to rotate to. Now, the servo is both an electrical and a mechanical device. These devices are brackets. They're purely mechanical devices. You have one bracket that's bent into kind of a funny shape. This kind of a bracket is used to hold a servo, like this. You also have a couple of straight brackets that can be used to attach one servo to another, like this. Lastly, you also have an angle bracket. This angle bracket can be used to attach something to a servo horn at a right angle. You can design and build an endless variety of robotic manipulators by making different kinds of brackets to hook together. You also have some screws and nuts in little cups. If you look closely at any one of the screws in these little cups, you will notice that the end of the screw is flat rather than pointy. These kinds of screws are called machine screws, and they're usually used to build machines, like robots, out of metal rather than building things out of wood, like houses. Machine screws are also sometimes called bolts. These two terms are interchangeable, and they mean the same thing. You will also notice that each of these little cups is labeled with some numbers on the side. For example, this cup says 632. This first number identifies the diameter of the screw. The second number tells us how many threads there are in one inch of the screw. So, for example, 
the 256 screws will have threads that are closer together than the 632 screws. If you look very closely, the threads of these little tiny screws are very close together. Next, you have a device like this. This device is called a microcontroller. A microcontroller is like a tiny computer that you can program. In fact, the actual part that you program is this little chip right in the center. There are many different kinds of microcontrollers, like Arduinos or PIC chips. This particular type is called a PSOC, P-S-O-C. And we're going to use this type of microcontroller rather than something like an Arduino because it's a little bit more powerful and we can use this microcontroller to control many servos to make robot arms that are bigger. The microcontroller, besides the little computer, also has these holes along the end which are called pins. We can use these pins to connect to devices like motors or servos LEDs, sensors, and so on. We can then use these pins in the programs that we write to send different kinds of commands to different servos, get information from sensors, and so on. The microcontroller is like the robot's brain. You also have a keypad device that looks like this. A keypad is a kind of sensor that can detect what button you press on the keypad. A sensor is any kind of device that we use to get information from the world. We can connect the sensor to our microcontroller and then use the information in our program to make different things happen when different keys are pressed. We're going to start today by building our manipulator. Start by clearing off your board so that you have room to work. Then, on your board, Find the pattern of holes that's in a rectangular shape, kind of in the center of the board. This is where we're going to attach our first servo to the board. Now, take the cup that's labeled 632 and dump it out. You have some 632 machine screws in here, and you also have these two long things that are called standoffs. Take one of your 632 screws and lift up the board so that you can reach underneath the board and put this 632 screw through one of the holes from the bottom. Then take one of your 632 standoffs and screw it on to the machine screw while you hold on to the head of the machine screw with your finger underneath the board. You can, it doesn't need to be very tight, it just needs to be finger tight, which means as tight as you can make it just using your fingers, not using a screwdriver. Now, take another 632 screw and pass it up through another one of the holes on the board, and you want to pick a hole that's diagonal to the first um, standoff that you've already placed here. Then take your other standoff and screw it onto this machine screw. Again, tighten it down, but not too much. Just as tight as you can get it using your fingers. Next, take one of your servos and set it on top of these two standoffs and use your remaining two 632 screws to attach the servo to the top of these two standoffs. You can start by screwing them in with your fingers and then finish it off with a screwdriver. If you can't get it and you get stuck, feel free to just raise your hand and I'll come over and help you. Or you can ask your neighbor 
and your neighbor might be able to help you as well. Tighten this down. It doesn't have to be very tight. Just enough so that your servo doesn't fall right over. Now, if you try to move this servo horn with your fingers, you'll notice that it moves fairly easily, but you can't turn it all the way around in a circle. You will hit some limits when you turn it clockwise or when you turn it counterclockwise. The horn of the servo can only rotate a total of 180 degrees. So don't try and turn it past the point where it naturally stops. Turn the servo horn clockwise like this as far as it can go until it hits its stop. Now take one of your linear links and line it up with the holes so that the linear link is pointing off to the right like this. Now take your 256 screws and we're going to use two of them to attach this linear link to the servo horn. Now you won't need to use any of your 256 nuts yet because the servo horn is tapped. That means that the servo horn has threads already cut into it internally so that you can screw these 256 screws directly into the servo horn. When you put the two 256 screws in, you want to pick two holes that are directly across from each other like this rather than two holes that are next to each other like this. This will give your bracket a little bit more stability. Now I'm going to take the rest of these 256 screws and nuts and put them back into the cup. We'll use them later on. Next, let's wire up this servo. If you look at your microcontroller very closely, you'll notice that there are little numbers and letters next to each of the holes on the body of the microcontroller. These numbers and letters are telling you which pin is which on the microcontroller. Now, take one of your jumper wires that looks like this and take the wire or the cable from your servo and find the black wire. Take this jumper wire and plug it into the hole that lines up with the black wire. This is your ground wire. Then look at your microcontroller and find the pin that's labeled GND. This pin is the ground pin. GND stands for ground. Then plug the other end of this jumper wire into the ground pin you'll find that it's the second from the left up here on, your, on the top row. So it should look like this. Your jumper wire should be plugged into the second pin from the left on the top, and the other end should be plugged into your servo connected to the black wire. Next, take another jumper wire and connect it to the red wire of your servo. So that'll be right next to the black one. Like that. The one in the middle is the red one. This is the one that we want to connect to power. Power on your microcontroller is labeled VDD. So find the pin that's labeled VDD and you'll find that it's the first one on the left in the top row and plug the other end of the jumper wire right in like that. Now lastly, <clears throat> take another jumper wire. Uh, incidentally, it doesn't matter what color jumper wire you use. The, the, the color of the wire doesn't have any meaning here. Now, plug one end of this jumper wire into the white wire from your servo. This is the signal wire. We want to plug this wire into pin 0.0, .0 on your uh, microcontroller. 
0, .0 oops, my power wire came loose. There we go. 0, .0, .0 is on the bottom row, about halfway across. Find 0, 0 and plug this wire into that one. Once you've got those three wires wired up, take your USB cable and connect one end to your computer and then take the other end of the USB cable and use it to connect to your microcontroller just like this. If you get it in the right way, the two little LEDs should turn on. And also, you'll notice that it's now very hard to turn the horn of the servo away from its position. If you unplug the PSOC, you can turn the horn of the servo very easily. But when you plug in the PSOC, you can't move it anymore. It's holding its position. Once you've got that, let's connect some of the buttons on the keypad. I've already programmed your PSOC so that when you press the one button, the servo horn should rotate in the counterclockwise direction. And when you press 3, the horn will rotate in the clockwise direction. So let's try and hook up some of the wires on this keypad. Take a jumper wire and connect one end of the jumper wire to the very first top hole of the keypad, like this and then connect the other end of this wire to pin 0, 2 on your microcontroller. Find pin 0, 2. It should be very close to 0, 0, the pin that you already connected. Then take another jumper wire and now you're going to have to do some counting. You need to find hole number 5 here. So we connected this one to hole number 1 and I'm going to count over two, three, four, five. I'll plug it into there. And then I'm going to connect this end to pin 2.7 on the microcontroller. 2.7 is in the top row and it's kind of close to the right, although not all the way over to the right. Now, if you got it right, when you press the 1 key, the servo should start to rotate in the clockwise direction. And when it gets all the way over 180 degrees, it will automatically stop because it can't move more than 180 degrees. Wherever you stop, it'll be difficult for you to move it with your fingers. It will be holding its position. You could test it again by unplugging the microcontroller and then you can turn it to whatever angle you want and then if you plug in the microcontroller it will move itself to zero and then when you press one it should start to rotate and you should be able to stop at any angle you want. Okay, now let's hook up the keypad so that we can rotate the link back by pressing 3. Take another jumper wire, and you've, you already have one wire in pin number 5. Find pin number 7 by counting two more holes over. 7, so the second from the last. And connect this one to pin 2-5. Pin 2.5 on the microcontroller. There we go. It's in the top row, very close to 2.7, which you already plugged in. And now to test it, press the 3 key, and the servo horn should rotate itself back. So now you can press 1 to make it go one direction, and you can press 3 to make it go the other direction. If you got this working, let's move on and let's connect a second servo to what we already have. Take the servo body bracket, 
which looks like this. And take your second servo, and we're going to set that on the table because we're going to use it in a moment. Take this servo body bracket and we're going to place it on top of the link like that. And now we're going to take some of these 256 screws and I'm going to use two screws, place them through two of these holes, through the body bracket and through the linear bracket, and then I'm going to use the little 256 nuts. I'm going to put one nut underneath here, and while I'm holding that nut underneath, I'm going to use the screwdriver to screw it down. So I'll hold the nut underneath with my finger, and I'll use the screwdriver to tighten it down. Just barely tight enough to hold it. And then I'm going to do the other one. So I'll put my screwdriver into the screw, and then I'll take the nut on my finger and put it underneath. And then tighten it down. All right, once you've got this, the body bracket should be kind of attached to the linear bracket. We're going to take this servo and slide it right on like that. And now you're going to use these two 440 screws and nuts that you have. So I'm going to take those. If the screw is already attached to its nut, start by unscrewing it. Now I'm going to do a very similar thing to what we just did. I'm going to put the screw through one of these holes, and I'm going to use the screwdriver to hold the screw in place, and then I'm going to put the nut underneath with my other finger, and then I'll use the screwdriver to tighten it down a bit. doesn't have to be too tight. And then I'll get the other one. I'll put the screw through. I'm going to do it on the other side. Once again, I'm going to put it diagonal to my first one because that will hold it a little bit better. I'll hold the screw in place with my screwdriver and then hold the nut in place with my finger. and screw it down. There we are. Next, we're going to do a similar thing to what we did with the first servo. I'm going to turn the servo horn clockwise to the right as far as I can until it stops. Now, I'm going to take this other link and I'm going to put it so that it's at approximately, but not exactly, a right angle. And I'm going to use two of the 256 screws to attach this linear link. Okay, we haven't wired it up yet, so you should still be able to rotate this link with your fingers relatively easily. But again, you can only move it 180 degrees. Let's wire it up. Just like the first servo, we've got a red wire, a black wire, and a white wire. And we're going to start by using a jumper to connect to the black wire. And if you remember, the black wire is ground. So we're going to look at our PSOC and find another pin that's labeled ground. You have another one in the bottom row towards the right. So find the pin that's labeled GND, plug into there. Then we'll take another jumper wire 
and connect to the red wire, which is the hole in the middle, like that. And this one needs to connect to VDD, that's power. VDD is far on the right, in the bottom row. Plug into there. Your servo might jump a little bit when you connect power and ground before we've connected the signal. Now use a third jumper to connect to the signal wire. And this one we want to connect to pin 01. Pin 01 is on the bottom row and we've already plugged things into 00 and 02 so it'll be right next to two other wires. Right when you plug it in, it will immediately, the second servo will immediately go to its zero position, which is right here. So you shouldn't be able to move it very well with your hand anymore. So we can still make the first servo turn using keys one and three. If we hook up keys two and A, that will allow us to move the second servo also. To do that, take a jumper wire, and we're going to find on your keypad pin number six. So count over one, two, three, four, five, six. It's right between two of the jumpers we've already connected. And this one, we're going to connect to pin number 26. Look at your microcontroller and find pin number 26. Connect it right there. And you can test it right away by pressing 2 on the keypad. If you got it right, the second servo will rotate counterclockwise when you press 2. But we still can't make it go backwards. We need to hook up the A key for that. So take one last jumper wire and connect it to the very last hole on your keypad. And this one you're going to plug into pin 24. Find pin 24. Plug it in there, and now you should be able to make the second servo move forwards and backwards, and you should be able to make the first servo go forwards and backwards. You probably can't make two go at the same time. I think I wrote the code so that only one of them could go at the same time. Now, in robotics, we many times care about what kind of path this part of the robot follows. This part of the robot at the very end of the linkage is called the end effector. And this is the part where we would attach some kind of a tool that can do work. To simulate that here, we're going to use a dry erase marker. Take your angle link and we're going to attach the angle link to the end of our robot linkage just like this. Take two more 256 screws Use the screwdriver to hold the screw in place while you place the nut against the screw from the bottom and hold the nut in place with your finger while you tighten the screw with the screwdriver from above. Don't make it too tight. Just enough to hold it in place and then do the same thing with the other screw.
All right, if you have some 256 screws left over, put them back in the little cup. Now, take your dry erase marker, take off the cap, and we're going to use a rubber band to attach the dry erase marker to the end of the robot, to the end effector. You can wrap it around a bunch of times to make it just tight enough to hold it. Now, here's the task. Let's see if you can use the buttons on the keypad to draw an actual shape on the whiteboard. Take the marker and slide it down so it's in contact with your board. Can you draw a circle or a square? See if you can get the end effector to move in a path that you would recognize, like a circle or a square. What kinds of shapes can you get, and what kinds of shapes can you not get? Can you think of a way that we could change the design of this robot so that we could get other kinds of paths of the end effector? When you're finished playing around with the manipulator, take it apart. Try to put the nuts and bolts back into the right cup where they go, and disconnect all of your wires.